So this was a fan question from last week, and you guys just said the Warriors in the NBA, so I didn't know what kind of what to, how we wanted to do this, but I'm going to do it both ways, I guess. So what, what the comment was on was the is the NFL rigged post, and so I guess I'm going to talk about the Warriors first, and the, the first thing that comes to mind here is the Warriors are really good. They're 34, 39 and four. Sorry, had temporary dyslexia, but I don't think that the Warriors. I don't know if they should really be that good as they are. And where's the season opener? It's the reason I see it is because if you look at the teams they've played. The, I mean, I'm just going through the schedule. The first real test was November 4th against the Clippers. And, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of 1-6, and 0-somethings, oh and something, like 1 wins, 2 wins. Detroit had 5 wins at the time. Memphis 3, 4, 1, 7. Clippers again. Uh, Bulls, which aren't that good this year. Nuggets, which, no. Lakers, I mean, they're not really playing. They've played the Raptors and Clippers, obviously, and they're both are playoff teams. Brooklyn's not. Pacers, probably. Boston, probably. And then you get to their first loss when they were 24-0. They lost to the Bucks off a of double overtime night before game. And... I mean, that was just because they were tired of playing two overtimes the day before, and then they came back and just pummeled the Bucks again. That was kind of a revenge game, and obviously that's what kind of happens when you play revenge games, but the one thing to me is they've played a couple, they've played a few really good playoff teams, and they're going to be, that are going to be in the mix, obviously, like the Cavs they played on Christmas, and they lost only by six. But Irving, that was Irving's like second game back, so that's kind of a. That's still not really good for a Warrior team. That they've they're winning by six, and then you got they them losing to the Mavericks, and there's no real excuse to that one. I don't know why they lost to the Mavericks here. I mean, it literally makes oh there's no. That was the game Clay Thompson or not Clay Thompson Steph Curry missed. And, I mean, I'm not really... J.J. Bure, I went off for 23, but I, I don't really see... Like, as I'm looking through their schedule, I'm not really seeing any real teams that they've... Like, that are really good that they've played because they haven't played the Spurs yet. Okay, they played Cleveland, but Cleveland's really set up to not compete with the Warriors. They play a big man lineup, and they have LeBron, who's not a three-point shooter. He's a go-in-the-low-post, out-muscle out you, out-dunk you, do whatever you want, basically in the post. But I guess the where the truth's going to be really told is what happens in that Spurs game on the uh, 25th is the first one. And then I don't really see, like I'm looking through their future matchups. They play the Thunder in February. Twice, well, okay, second one's in March, sorry. They play them twice in three games. But I'm not really seeing, they play the Spurs again on the 19th of March. I'm not really seeing any good teams on here. I mean, they've done, they're done playing the Cavs. They got still got their four games against the Spurs to go. And then it, I, I don't, I do think that they'll break that 72 and 10 mark. But. I don't think that it's going to be it might be 73 and 73 and 9. I don't see it really being beating them by a bunch though. Like all these everyone I see is like, "Oh, when I've lost four, so it's going to have to be 78 and 4." But like they're going to do the best that they like they're not going to lose another game. And I'm like, mm, "No, nah, it's not going to happen." I mean, they only had Steph Curry to the to the All-Star game starters at least. I mean, there are probably going to be a bunch of them. Draymond Green should be a should be a starter on 
or not starter, but in the All Star game at least. So, but as I look at through their stats, they have a pretty good breakdown of points per game. You got Steph Curry basically at 30, Klay Thompson at 20, Draymond Green at basically 15, Barnes at 12, and then there's seven, seven, six, six, five, five. They have 10 guys scoring at least five points a game, which is good. I think that's a great thing with them. But I mean, you have all the scoring. You can have all the scoring you want. It's more of who gets who gets the ball to everyone and who's the ball go through. And that really, what that really means is like everyone thinks that it's Steph Curry. It's a Steph Curry show. Possibly, he does take over in late games because he almost he almost never plays a whole game. I I don't think I'm gonna look. Let me look here. He's got. Doesn't say points per game, or not points per game. I'm looking for minutes per game, but I'm not quite seeing it. I guess I can. I'll try and find it while I keep talking about this. But Steph Curry has traditionally not played all of the game. He's like it's a 48-minute uh, game, and his career is a 35. That's He's or 35 minutes per game is his career, and he's so he's missing out on over a quarter of the game just because he's sitting. And this year that's even down to 33. Okay, it's down a minute, so he's he's missing out on 14 minutes of a game. But that's more of because he can't he can't play all of it. Obviously, no one really can. But Steph Curry is really good, and they don't need him to play the whole game because they're blowing people out. On the most interestingly enough, as I'm looking at the field goal percentage, Steph Curry is fourth behind Festus Azili, Andrew Bogut, and James Michael McAdoo, who are all shooting over 500, but or 55 percent actually. Steph Curry's at 50 percent straight, basically straight up, and then Livingston's at 50. And then Klay Thompson's the worst at 46. I think they're just... What's really good with the Warriors is they're taking a lot of good shots and being smart about the ball. They're smart about taking their shots and stuff. And another another thing here is I'm looking at the turnovers per game. As a team, they're averaging like 4, 5, 6, 7, plus 3... About 10 turnovers a game. If you average only 10 turnovers a game... Give or take, like, two, they're, they're, like, between 10 and 12. It really depends. I can't really add and talk at the same time. But they're still averaging less than, like, 15. And so they're not turning the ball over. They're getting high-quality shots. They're being a really effective offense. And that's what Steve Curry really comes from with the, with the Bulls. He's just expanding it out more. Because he was on that 96 Bulls team with uh, Michael Jordan and Thompson. Or not Thompson. Scottie Pippen and all that, so... He know he's drawing from that and making it a little bit more spread out to the three-point line, and that's a good thing for them. I think that's a great that's a great thing that they have Steph or um, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. Just blanks. Blank to me. Their coach. Um, he's coming back today too, Steve Kerr, and I think it's gonna be a good thing because he kind of just passed down everything he knew to Luke Walton, which is it's always good. If you can have two coaches that know what they're doing. So, moving on to the rigged part about it, I, I haven't really had a lot of time to prepare for this, and I do have I have thought about this in the past. That I know that a lot of people have said, "Oh, the NBA is rigged. It's easiest to rig it because you got the you got a bunch of athletes that have played basketball forever, and they can just." turn the ball over and leave a layup to just increase the point spread or whatever. And then you got the refs like Tim Donahue that have said come out and blatantly said, yeah, I changed the point spread, but I didn't change the outcome kind of thing. So, there's a lot of facts there that you can point to that say, oh yeah, it's rigged. But, I'm thinking I've read a good post from my buddy Austin Drews. I'll leave uh, I'll link it in the description. It was about Steph Curry and how people like try to copy him, and I think that's what the NBA is going to. Steph Curry is more of a everyday person. Like a lot of us can see ourselves playing like him, 
because he's got the smaller size. He's not the LeBron 6'8", 6'9", 240, 250, whatever he is. Whatever he is now. I know he's 6'8", 6'9", and like he's fluctuated between 240, 280, whatever. Just being the super athletic, strong, big dude. No one can. No one's really like him. You have to be physically built like him to be like him. Where Steph Curry is the small, scrawny, kind of built dude. Where like he's more relatable to us. So I think the if the NBA is rigged, and I'll do a little bit more of a deeper thought on this because I was doing a little bit of a combo thing here. And if the NBA is rigged, they're they're trying to rig it toward the Warriors because Warriors are likable, they're fast, they got a lot of energy, and they're relatable. Because, like I said, Steph Curry, 6'3", on a good day, 220, and uh, not even, he's like 180, 190, somewhere in there. And he's like a smaller dude, and everyone he's more of a regular person looking guy. And so you see that, and you're like, oh, hey, I can be like him. Oh, Clay Thompson, he's only 6'6", I think, and he's like something... Whatever, but if you look at this team, there are a bunch of good dudes that just look like they're they should play at the YMCA instead of in the NBA, and they're still killing the ball, killing shots and stuff. So, if that's what they're doing, they want it to make it more make NBA more relatable and gain the views from this energetic, relatable team that everyone can see themselves, I guess, being a part of. But not, I mean, if you had the skill set to be in the NBA, and you just like. Like, if you had the skill set to be in the NBA and you had Steph Curry's size, you could be in the NBA kind of thing. They're giving people hope of it, where you're seeing the NFL dropping down because of concussions, injuries, all that stuff, and then the MLB just because it's kind of boring and long. Then you have this energetic sport with the NBA. Relatable guys, fast-paced teams, good high-scoring games, all that stuff. It's just, it could be rigged. I'm going to do a little bit more on this in the future. And I'll do another post on this in, a lo- in the future, so I look forward to that. That's kind of something I'm going to be talking about in that one, so look forward to that. And I might do some other sports as well if I get some more comments, so yeah. I guess that's it for the Rhino Sports Talk podcast this week, if I can talk. Like I said, I think Aaron Rodgers is a replica of Peyton Manning. I got the Cardinals Patriots in the going to the Super Bowl after this week, as much as it hates me to say that. There was really no good team in the NCAA this year. Uh, the early declaration rule where you can be a junior and go to the NFL is terrible for both the NFL, college, and its players. And I think it's a good thing that Pete Rose is going to the Res Hall of Fame, and it's a good first step for him to getting into the Hall of Fame. So, glad you guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you like, hit the like button, subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to hear more. And I'll be putting out a, another podcast next week and a news, another article this upcoming week about the Pro Bowl. So that's going to be an interesting one. I think a lot of people like it. And it's going to be a lot of comparison and talking about what's, I guess, wrong with the Pro Bowl and how to fix it. So if you enjoyed the Pro Bowl, take a listen to that one. Thanks and have a good day, guys.